Hey my people, how you doing? Hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we will be discussing the 4-3-3 formation replicated under Maurizio Pochettino at Chelsea, of course. With the major injury to Nkunku, it does mean that they will probably try and alter their shape. And to be honest, they've just gone and signed Lavia, they've just gone and signed the likes of Caicedo. So why not try and fit those two in the midfield alongside Fernandes? Of course, you do have Gallagher as well. But I do think that more or less Pochettino will look to try and alter the shape in the middle of the park. Maybe just make it a bit more balanced, not as attacking, but it then allows more attacking outlet from the likes of Jackson, Sterling and Lees or whoever you have up front, to be honest. Because, I mean, Chelsea are spending some absolute bread at the moment on players. It's, it's crazy. Like, if... Like, I know last season you guys finished 12 and, you know, the banter, this, that, the other. But to be honest, it must be so good to be a Chelsea fan. Like, you sign a, a wonder kid every other day. You, you're linked with players. You more or less get the players. Even when you think you're not getting the players. I mean, the whole Kaiseido meltdown was hilarious the other night. Just for you guys to go and get him anyway. And then you went and got Lavia on top of that. So, to be a Chelsea fan, man, to be a Chelsea fan. But going through the team, of course, we've got Sterling, Jackson, Olise, the new signing, of course. Um, we've got Fernandes, Lavia, Caicedo. Of course, we're, we're trying to get that midfield three going. We've got Ben Chilo, Batashile, Silva, of course, Captain James, Sanchez. We've got Broja, we've got Madawake, we've got Gallagher, Andre, of course, um, Bettinelli, Gusto, De Sassi. We've got Cucurella, Fofana, Mudrik, and Kunko, obviously, on the bench. And then a few other players. I mean, some players I have also learned that because this is more or less the career mode I'm playing with at the moment. Um, but yes, some players on the, on the reserves and everything, but that's more or less the mainstay of the team um, that Pochettino has at his uh, grasp at the moment. Um, and then as you can see there, it is just a basic 4-3-3, three, three. of course, two centre-backs, two full-backs, one DM, two central midfielders, of course, one striker, and then of course, two wingers. So with the instructions, of course, I haven't actually seen what Pochettino would play like with uh, a 4-3-3 three, three system, but I would imagine it would more or less take the the core principles of the 4-2-3-1 system and put it into phase of play, of course. Mainly with this system, though, I would imagine that Pochettino would want to try and maintain the ball as much as possible, maybe not try and be super fluid with it going forward, maybe not try and be as counter-attacking, just try and have the ball maintained and pass it around, find space to be a bit more calmer with it. But basically, I'm saying this because I haven't actually seen what Pochettino can do with this formation. I, I'm, this is what I'm going on from past experiences of seeing a Pochettino 4-3-3. Um, and more or less what I would imagine him to do it with Chelsea. So just a you know a little disclaimer there. But basically, a press after loss of position, of course, basically with a modern day game, when you do play a 4-3-3, when you lose the ball, you want to try and win it back as fast and as quick as possible, um, and also as high up as possible. That's what I'm trying to say. The damn words aren't coming out of my mouth correctly. But yes, you want to try and win it um, high up the field. And of course, now that you've got Caicedo and Lavia, mainly Caicedo, that absolute work dog man who's going to win it back, be the absolute crazy ass dude in the midfield and and just exerts his energy on, on the opposition is going to be really really exciting to see as for the width it's a very nice compact width making sure that the defense the off uh, the opponents i should say can't pass through the the lines of course can't you know pass ball through the middle of the park through your team of course and they're going to have to try and work it wide and beat you in the in the with the crosses into the box of course but of course you do have great center backs in this team you've got de Sassi, of course recently scored his first goal for the club you've got Bashile. Of course, you've got Levi Colwell, and of course, you've got the Rolls Royce himself, the 39-year-old man, Thiago Silva, who is incredible for his age, honestly. Age like the most finest of finest wines. Um, as for the depth, of course, it is set to 80, so it's a very high line. You will be looking to try and um, work your way up the field, it more or less squeeze your opponents in their own half, and make sure that you know your centre-backs have things covered. They are going to be pushing up ever so slightly, pushing up almost all the way back to the goalkeeper, the opposition's goalkeeper, I should say, making sure that they can't really have any space to try and play out, and they'll look to try and hoof the ball up the field. And you did kind of see this with um, the Liverpool game, where Chelsea more or less just squeezed their way up the field, pushing Liverpool further and further back. Um, and that works very, very well with this team, I must say. Um, as for the, the builder player, it's a slow builder, like I say, you want to be a bit more calmer with this um, position, with this set of tactics, you want to try and work the ball into the spaces, find the nice and better passes, the better opportunities. You have great technicians in your midfield with Fernandez, Lavia, of course, Kaisoto can pick out a ball himself, but also with the likes of um, Elise coming into the team, he can also cut into the midfield and, you know, try and link up play with that as well. And then, of course, chance creation will be set to position. You want to, like I said, you want to try and maintain as much position as possible. You do have really, really good technicians in that midfield now. 
Um, as well as your wing backs, of course, or your full backs in this situation, they are also going to be very, very instrumental in you retaining position in those wider areas. But speaking of wider areas, the width is set to 70. Now, I don't know if you guys may have noticed, but more or less on this channel, I try and like set it to around 70, especially when you have a very attacking team that's going to want to try and dominate position because your, your midfield needs to more or less be a bit more flared out as well as your fullbacks in this situation. You want them to try and be on the ball as much as possible, be open in that nice open space with a nice switch of play. You can switch it from Reese James to Ben Chilwell, but also you want the likes of Fernandez. Um, as well as Lavia to be on the ball and have more space around them to be able to be a bit more clinical with their passing as well as be able to find some time to pick up the best pass possible or the best play going forward. Um, so that is why it is a nice spread out 70. Um, as for players in the box, set to 80, you want to try and overload the box, try and overload the opposition. Of course, you will be squeezing them higher up the field, so it will more or less uh, push the opposition's midfield into their own box from time to time. So the more players you can try and get into those areas, the more opportunities you will to potentially score some goals. Um, and of course, you want to help the likes of Nick Jackson, Sterling, um, Olise, of course, with being able to have more bodies around them to open up more spaces for them. And then as for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. Now, starting off with the goalkeeper, very similar to the other sets of formations that I've gone with, but Sanchez, he's set to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. Of course, extremely high line. You need him to be able to be off the line, of course, and um, be able to collect passes, spray passes himself and, and whatnot. Um, as for your two centre-backs at the back here, they are set to their base set of uh, defensive instructions. And then going on to the full-backs, as you can see here, Ben Chilwell and Rhys James, they're both set to join the attack. That's very obvious. They are a very attacking outlet set of full-backs. But at, at the same time, you can see that I've set it to a mixed attack. So you don't just want them um, overlapping the entire time. You do want them to invert, adding another dynamic uh, phase to their game, making sure that if Sterling or Elise are hugging the touchline, they can always look to invert and make runs from behind, creating a little bit of a 1-2 situation or potentially a catch-22 situation for the opposition defender to say, should I go with him or should I stay with this man? And therefore, you're stretching the defense already, you're opening up spaces for either your attacking fullback or your attacking wide man. So either way, it does work out very, very well. And then, of course, they are set to stick to position. You want them, especially in a back four system, you want them to more or less... Um, hold that line, hold that position from time to time. But moving on forward though, we have got Lavia, if it lets me select him, of course. So Lavia, I picture Lavia as more of like a, a Michael Carrick type player. He's not going to dive in for tackles. He's not going to, you know, he, he's more or less like a Jorginho. He's going to make sure that the ball's ticking over. He's going to make sure that players are, are structurally sound with, with their, their positioning, of course. And he's going to run that midfield like a proper midfield general. So he is more or less going to look to try and intercept passes, of course, position himself correctly, but he's also have, going to have a balanced um, attack. So he will look to bomb on forward, create overloads in certain areas for certain players, of course, because he will be adding an extra body higher up the field. Um, normal exceptions will be on for him, cover the wing, and then of course he's going to be the deep line playmaker. So this is why I say this is very much like a Jorginho type role, and that's more or less how I do see Pochettino using him going forward. But then we've got Caicedo, who did play as a DM last season for Brighton and was fantastic about it. But I did mention in the, the Lavia and Caicedo tactics video where I did say that, you know, both of them are really good, but I see more, uh, Caicedo more of the, as like a uh, eight that's a hybrid six or a six that's a hybrid eight. Um, so I see more of, a, of, an, of an eight going forward. But he is going to be set to stay back well attack and get it on the edge of the box. Of course, aggressive interceptions. You want him to try and exert his pace and his power and his aggressiveness on the opposition. But mainly you do want him to cover the center. So he will try and look to be the, the slightly higher up DM in the team trying to win the ball higher up. Very much what Kante was at the, the latter stages of his Chelsea career where he wasn't played as like the deepest playmaker or the deepest player I should say. He was played slightly higher up so that Chelsea could win the ball higher up and then obviously transition into a counter attack and then potentially score goals obviously. Um, so that's more or less going to be the Caicedo role. Um, and then of course you've got the, the technician, the, the guy who's going to unlock most defences. You've got Enzo Fernandez. He is said to have a, a balanced attack balance crossing runs, normal interceptions, and then free roam. So, of course, that is the only alteration we've, I've really made to his instructions. Um, as you can see, like he's he's not going to bomb on into the box. He's going to be in and around that area, potentially finding pockets of space to operate in, picking out his passes, being a bit more calm on the ball, and also helping the likes of Lavia and Caicedo take over play, making sure that they're retaining position, of course. But he is going to be the main man in order to try and unlock the opposition defense. Um, as for Jackson, he is said to have a balanced width, 
a, a mixed set of attacking runs. So he is very good with his holder play, of course, but he's also got a load of pace and he's incredibly strong um, with the ball at his feet, running at the opposition. So you do want him to sometimes drop a bit deeper, collect the ball, and then run at the opposition defense, having them backtrack a lot more. Of course, his interceptions will be uh, set to aggressive, so he will look to try and lead the, to press the, the, you know, the, the first line of defense. That will be his role. Um, and then, of course, he is set to stay forward. As for the Oli's set of instructions, that is in another video. If you would like to click on it, I'll link it at the end of this video, and you can find out what his set of instructions would be for this formation going forward. And then finally, for Sterling, he is set to come back on defense, stay wide, have a balanced support. So you do want him to bomb on in behind, of course. But at the same time, you do want him to sometimes drop a bit deeper, collect the ball, and then run at the opposition. Very much what Nick Jackson will also look to be doing. So it just adds a bit of a, a dual attack to the op opposition. And then, of course, he's set to normal interceptions and, of course, making angled runs into the box, adding another a head to try and hit um, from crosses and, and whatnot. So, yes, that is my set of instructions for the Chelsea 4-3-3. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you can, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, more importantly, if you are new. And, of course, hit one of those videos. I know it will help you out a great deal in the future. But until then, guys, I hope you have a damn great day, and I am out.